It is said, and with good reason, that Zhejiang merchants have a unique talent for business. They've been compared to hearty plants. Whatever the soil, they will grow. Wherever there is sunshine, they will blossom. Whatever the metaphor, Zhejiang businessmen have an uncommonly good nose for opportunities. Zhejiang's Wenzhou, it's not just a city, it's a city based on an idea and a symbol of private enterprise and entrepreneurial spirit. There are innumerable legends of Wenzhou Nis who went from rags to riches, who made it big on their own and often against the odds. But the ascent of Wang Jingyao is particularly interesting. From charter flights to milk cows, from catering to taxi cabs, the scope of Wang's endeavors is nothing if not remarkable. When only 15 years old, Wang left his home in Changnan, Wenzhou, arriving eventually in Changsha. There, he would team up with an older man, a hustler like himself, and run with him a string of small business operations. When the Spring Festival of 1989 arrived, Wang found himself without a train ticket for his journey back home. As he wandered the streets of Changsha, an airplane flying overhead caught his eye. The conceptual opposite of Newton's falling apple, the plane triggered a thought. Why not fly home? On July 28th, 1991, Wang chartered an AN-24 from Changsha to Wenzhou, and with that single flight, the history of civil aviation of China had been changed, changed by a farmer. So began Wang's empire in the skies, China's first private charter airline company. Wenzhou's Tianlong Charter Airplane Corporation has since run more than 400 flights nationwide. Wang's company stayed a steady course of development. Then, in 2002, the Junyao Group became a shareholder in Wuhan Airlines. It was the sum effect of 11 years of effort. And in June 2006, the group acquired their first airplane. Sadly, Wang himself would not see his own planes fly overhead. In November 2004, and at the age of 38, cancer took the life of this dynamic, visionary leader. In 2004, at the award ceremony for Zhejiang's top 10 businessmen, Wang won a special contribution award. Another award went to Li Shufu, a Taizhou native. He had earned the nickname the Car Madman, and it was not intended as flattery. Ten 一定是贬义的。他从心底里边就开不起李书福能把这个车造好。所以说他是个疯子。In 1979, the 
，因为改革开放啊，这样一个大行的历史时期，这真是呃，春风拂面，啊，春风荡漾，就是整个社会啊，后来给我的感觉啊，就是非常的清新的空气和非常宽松的经济的发展的氛围，所以我总觉得。哎，不能再上去了。<笑>哎，我们要就是借这么一个历史的这个机遇啊，怎么要去呃尝试去探索去实现？就那这个是我的一个最大的这个正确的这个选择。Lee eventually succeeded in persuading his family, and soon thereafter tried his hand at different trades and in different industries. He ran a camera shop and a refrigerator factory. He invested in real estate, and he bought his first car, a vehicle from the Brilliance Auto Line. This was his only connection with the automotive industry. That first car proved to be a very wise investment, but not in the usual sense. In tearing apart his car, Lieg found that. Building a car couldn't possibly be too difficult. In 1990, a base model Volkswagen Santana sold in China for nearly 180,000 yuan. That was roughly six times the sale price of the same car outside China. That same year, only 60,000 Santanas were sold in Shanghai, but the profits there far exceeded Volkswagen's sales targets. Lee quickly got down to business and decided to make the best Chinese car on the roads, the Chinese Benz. In 1996, Lee bought two Mercedes. At that time, these world-class cars were the most expensive cars in China's retail market. Geely's workers reverse-engineered the pair of German sedans, acquired Benz components from Hong Kong, and whipped together their Geely Benz. Li promoted his Geely Benz on television, and his cars were marketplace standouts. But Li had learned that manufacturing a top-end vehicle was an expensive undertaking. He turned his production scheme on its head and began making the least expensive cars in China. With reference to the Xiaoli style of compact car, Li's Geely Pride went into production. Li held a hundred-table banquet and invited scores of guests to celebrate the rebirth of Geely Automotive. But to his surprise and disappointment, a number of guests declined his invitation. The car, they maintained, was illegitimate. From comedy to near tragedy, a frustrated Li attempted to fax Ye Baorong, the vice president of Zhejiang. Who was in charge of the province's industrial areas? An hour after his attempts to connect with her, Li was contacted by Ye, who said she would come down to see the first car made in Zhejiang. This, Li says, comforted him a lot. Because at that time, Ye Zhengzhang Jia Zhong didn't come, then all the leaders of the country couldn't come. They didn't want to come. Ye Zhengzhang came, so we were able to. 大大的继续的研究和探索。Ms. Ye's presence made the Geely birthday party an event to remember. Li, however, remained worried about the legal status of his car, and it is that status that would determine the fate of Geely Automotive. In 1999, the vice premier Zhang Peiyan came to Geely along with the leader of the automobile industry. Li's strong, simple words at that meeting are now legendary. Please give us a chance. The blossoming of China's new automobile industry would, in time, bring Li a number of chances. In 2005, Beijing opera performers made a rare appearance at the Frankfurt Auto Expo. They were there to help promote Geely's international debut. Cheers in Frankfurt were more for the performers than the car. The model on display raised eyebrows and drew a few chuckles. But back in China, no one would be laughing at Li Shufu, not anymore. Some had even compared automakers Geely and Cherry 
as the Chinese counterpoints to Honda and Hyundai. Li's fellow villager Pang Qingnian is another young man with dreams in motion. Pang's products now account for half of the domestic luxury coach market. Pang was born into a poor family and from the age of six led the family cow to pasture. He did every kind of hard farm work there was, planting, irrigation, harvesting crops. Come in 1979, Pang ran a small factory that made plastic bags in Tiantai. Within a year, it was the most successful factory of its kind in the area. In 1986, Pang went on to establish a tire production facility in Pan'an, a poor mountainous region. Within four years, the factory was the largest of its kind in China and was a supplier to leading bicycle manufacturers like Yongzhou and Haishi. But even being a leader in the bicycle tire industry wasn't enough for Pang, who set his sights on the manufacture of automobile tires. It was at that juncture that Pang reasoned, wildly, that the investment required to enter automobile tire manufacturing wasn't in fact far off what would be required to manufacture automobiles. Lacking the necessary policies and technical support to manufacture vehicles on his own, Pang entered into a partnership with the Beijing North Vehicle Group Corporation and the Jinghua Economic Development Zone and established the Northern Fulai Auto Company. But not everything was going as planned. 这个四年时间做了八部车子，那么这个八部车子呢，说的话呢，造出来了一个我是他的成本高于售价，品质很差，就是不是这里漏风，就哪里漏雨，不是这里毛病，就哪里毛病，这个这个企业就没有办法活下